get to our panel now. Start Pleasure. off with Emily Rowland with what the market is looking for from the Fed today. Emily, what is your base case? I mean, everybody's base case is a 25 basis point hike, but in terms of the messaging, it, it almost seems like it is in the Fed's interest to send out a very hawkish message to say, you know what, everything is still on the table. Yeah, absolutely. The Fed's probably going to need to be the adult in the room today and warn market participants that if inflationary pressures do continue to bounce around and maybe pick up uh, here based on those base effects kind of moving the other way over the next few months, there is the chance that more hikes are on the table here. There has certainly been, as Steve pointed out, some welcome news for the Fed as it relates to inflationary pressures subsiding. You know, you look, you see it everywhere from used car prices falling from the prices paid components of the business surveys that we look at falling up, but the labor market still remains tight. Look at initial jobless claims. They look like they were perking up a little bit. Now we're back down to the lower end of the range that we've been in since early February. So tough job for the Fed today. I wish we were getting a dot plot. I think it would be all over the place. Uh, it would be interesting to note the lack of consent on the Fed. Yeah, particularly coming from a meeting where there was, you know, complete consensus in yeah. terms of the de decision there. Um, Mark, Emily had mentioned what has come down in price, but what has gone up in price, oil up 14 percent just since the June meeting. We also have grains going higher on Russia pulling out of the Black Sea initiative, really proving that commodity inflation is, is sticky. It's, it's something that the Fed has no control over. How does that all factor in, you think, in the Fed's messaging today? Uh, not much. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, underlying inflation, core inflation, excluding, you know, the volatile commodity prices that you mentioned is uh, trending lower. It's, as Steve said, it's not a straight line. It's going up, it's going down and all around. But the trend lines are all pretty good. And, uh, you know, it's always hard to forecast uh, inflate, forecast anything, but forecasting inflation is particularly difficult. But I think we can stay with a high degree of confidence it's going to continue to moderate. We We know that vehicle prices are going to come in. There's a lot more production happening overseas and used in, in new vehicle prices have rolled over. And we know with a high degree of confidence that the uh, growth in the cost of housing services is going to slow. That's tied into rents and rents have gone flat to down since the end of last year. So I think it's becoming increasingly clear inflation is you know headed in the right direction. It may take a while to get back to the Fed's target. And I think the Fed's going to remain you know strident in, in its language. Uh, as a result. But, you know, I think they're going to get what they want and won't need to raise rates after raising them today. Strident uh, meaning hawkish, Mark. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, if I were them, no matter what was going on, I'd be I'd talk tough. Right. Yeah. Because you want to keep inflation expect expectations down, down to that 2 percent, because if you do, it just makes it easier to get over actual inflation back in. So, you know, they have every incentive to, to talk uh, stridently, uh, hawkishly. But you know, at the end of the day, I think the numbers suggest that they won't need to raise rates after they raise them today. So, Badger, what's, what's the base case scenario in terms of what happens today in the rates market? You know, what's interesting, I was just taking a look at what's happened since the June meeting in the various asset classes. Uh, the 10-year yield has gone up 10 basis points. The two-year yield has gone up 40 basis points. So what are you expecting here? I think the Fed is going to raise rates by 25 basis points, but then retain a hawkish stance. Mm -hmm. As Mark pointed out, I mean, inflation is, is coming down, but only gradually. And what we've seen in the last few weeks is a sharp rise in inflation expectations. The five-year forward, five-year break-even that the Fed looks at very closely has gone from two, two and a quarter percent around closer to two and a half percent. So the rise in yields, the nominal yields that we've seen over the, the past couple of weeks has mostly come in come because of higher inflation expectations. That's something the Fed is, is concerned about. The market is starting to price in, um, you know, uh, Fed policy that's a, a higher for longer. Uh, and also what higher uh, inflation expectations means is that the Fed is going to, to keep a, a hawkish stance, perhaps for a lot longer than what the market's expecting. The market's now pricing in cuts for 2024, uh, higher for longer would mean that, that those cuts might have to get pushed out uh, further uh, into into uh, the later half of, of 2024.